Welcome back to the channel and today we're taking a look at the Monterey Bay Nods River Otter. This is the second in-house design made in the USA for Monterey Bay Knives. I'm pretty sure it's the second. The first was the Monterey Bay Knives Sea Otter drop point and this one has that beautiful warning. Absolutely love this knife. I tested and reviewed this one a long time ago on the channel. If you had not checked this one out, go check it out. These are, I call them medium size EDC knives, coming in at 6.875 inches long with a 3 inch Warncliffe blade of CPM MagnaCut steel with a proper HRC to it. I got lucky enough to be able to check out the prototype of this knife at Blade Show two years ago. Ray Laconico had it in his pocket and he let me bondle around with it for a while. And then I got to think about it for the for the next two years after that until these were available. Now these, I think they're still doing it by lottos because they can only make so many and uh, they're in pretty high demand. It took me a little while, but I was able to score one. I did pay for this fully, so don't think this was sent to me or anything. I do like both Ray and Stanford Owen of Monterey Bay Knives. Both of them very, very nice gentlemen. And every year at Blade Show, I get to talk with them, and both of them are class acts. So because of that warny blade shape, it's going to be an excellent utility cutter. Easy to use that tip to do some fine, precise cutting. Or if you need to poke it into something, you can put your finger right there so you don't go further than your finger. There's a lot of utility uses this blade's good for and this one's not a complete straight edge it has an ever so slight belly there i love the look of it love that little top swedge and they come with this blasted stone wash finish gives it that aged look i like the look of it and being that this is magna cut i'm not worried about it corroding because magna cut's a highly corrosion resistant steel and when done properly it is a phenomenal steel you do have jimping up top as you can see and it, it definitely grips that thumb nicely but if i want to overshoot it i can choke back right here it's right where you want it to be but if you choke up if you choke up to the front portion of that the scales then you overshoot it which i mean it didn't bother me either way throughout all the stuff i cut now, my knife did come, whenever I got it out of box, it did come with a burr on one side. It had just a very fine burr that didn't get completely knocked off. And I know they were rushing to get these out. So it, to me, it wasn't a big deal. You know, if you don't know how to strop a knife, then it may be a big deal to you. But literally, I, I think I did uh, 10 passes on that side. I went I went five back and forth and then I did a few just on that side to fatigue it and it popped off rather quickly so it wasn't the biggest deal then right after I finished dropping it it was super super sharp of course that almost straight edge is going to be excellent at cardboard slicing because you're getting full power from heel to tip on there you know it's staying in that cut the entire way and then once I got done with the cardboard, went to the wood just to test the ergos, but I already knew this, this handle is pretty darn comfortable because I tested the Sea Otter and it's a pretty neutral handle. You have two flat slabs of tie, just a small choil up there. For my medium sized hands, they fit great. Now this is not, the, the clip that comes on is just a bent titanium, it's a bent spring titanium clip. And I put one of their milled tie clips on it. They off they sell on their site different types of clips. Like you can get a Timascus one, like this one that I need to redo. I think they got zirconium right now available on the site. Sometimes they just have the plain tie ones like this. They have the slotted, non-slotted. So they definitely have some options there. So yeah, I, I thought it performed pretty good. Now when I got to the sisal rope, I did lift it up on a on a small block so I could get more of that cutting edge onto what I was cutting, and it did great. Now, I will say, I, I do wish this was like a deep hollow grind. It feels like a flat, I'm not sure. Uh, I know my uh, Sea Otter has a, hollow, a nice deep hollow on it, so I'm not sure I, I can feel the deep hollow on this one. This one is either a very shallow hollow or a flat grind. Okay, I just put a ruler on it and it looks to be a flat grind. Like I said, unless it's a very, very minute hollow, it seems to be a flat grind. And I think it would have been excellent, excellent if they would have had a deep hollow like my Sea Otter does. Just because it's, it's going to thicken up with every sharpening. 
This one is gonna take a little while to start thickening it up and it slices really, really good. With such a sharp grind height, it's gonna get thick rather quickly. The behind the edge thickness is about 21 thousandths behind the, behind the thinnest portion of that edge, which is not terrible. But like I said, it's gonna thicken up rather quickly because of the flat grind. But for me, you know, I still enjoy the knife. I have, I'm a knife reviewer, so I have tons of knives to rotate through. So this might get carried, you know, a few times during the month. Or it might not get carried at all. It just depends on what's in the rotation that week. So it's going to be perfectly fine for me. It's overall, I love the sim simplistic design. Ray Laconico design has, he's probably one of my favorite makers, if not my favorite designer. And pretty much everything that he and Stanford design, I love. And this one's been doing it for me for two years before it came out. Now let's discuss the deployment and action of this knife. You have dual titanium thumb studs on this that give you perfect amount of traction there without being uncomfortable. And it flicks out just nice. It's riding on, I think, brass bushings. And I, I have to say, uh, I noticed it quickly with this one. It breaks in so nicely and they get ridiculously smooth. I mean, this one is very, very smooth. It's not a free drop or anything, but it's that nice hydraulic smooth. It's uh, Both of these are a little bit smoother than my Sabenzas. Now, I'm not sure why they, they went with brass over phosphor bronze. It's not something you see a whole lot, but I haven't noticed any kind of huge difference. I know phosphor bronze is self-lubricating because the more it burnishes itself, the smoother it gets, the slicker it's going to get. But I think the same happens with the brass because you can polish brass up to a mirror polish as well. And all I can say is, you know, out the box smoothness is smooth, but nowhere near as smooth as it is right now and nowhere near as smooth as this one is now. This one's been carried and used a bunch and it's super, super smooth. But if you're if you're a bearing guy and you, you gotta have your knives free drop on, then this one's definitely not for you. But if you like a nice controlled, silky smooth action, then this one might be for you. I absolutely love the action on it. And especially you knowing it's just gonna continue to get smoother. All right, let's take a look at the handle area. You have a dark blasted stone washed titanium frame, flat frame knife with a uh, nice chamfering going around no sharp spots because whenever they did the stone washing it burnished all those edges so you don't have any hard angles anywhere that dig into the, your hand and uh, like i said in the video and like i said earlier the ergos are really good because you have you know just a neutral broomstick style handle nothing poking or prodding me at least now your pivot is a Torx T8. Unfortunately, they went with Torx T6 for the body screws. I wish they would have went with T8 at least throughout, if not bigger, but is it end of the world? No, and I've taken apart this one. I've taken apart this one multiple times and I haven't had any issues there. And I'm sure if you strip something out, I'm sure they, they could rectify that for you. You got two standoffs back here. Those are titanium standoffs. So if you'd want to anodize them a certain color, you could along with the frame, your thumb studs, you could put a pop of color on there. I like the monochrome look. I think it just looks rustic and mean. Uh, yeah, flow through construction. There is no internal milling. However, this thing, in my opinion, is perfect weight. It's coming in at 3.1 ounces. And it's got a three inch blade, so it's just right over that ounce and inch that some people actually care about. I don't really care about that. I find it to be really, really easy to carry. It This one hugs the pocket nicely. You don't have any flipper tab getting in the way of anything in your pocket. It's a little bit wider than the Sea Otter, as you can see, because of the, the blade shape, but not that bad. Let's take a look at the lockup. Mine's sitting, I'd say, at around 40% or so. You could actually see the MagnaCut stamp right there. And I can't really tell in there, and I forgot to look. There is no hardened stainless steel lock insert, but I don't think it's needed. I've had my other one for a, a long time now, and it's, it's done the same way. I'm guessing they either carburize it, where they're heat treating the, the uh, titanium like Chris Reeve does, or they're carbonizing the top. I, I don't remember what they do, um, but it, like I said, super tight lockup. Mine has no movement whatsoever, and it hasn't moved a bit since I got it. And 
my other one is the exact same way and it hasn't moved a bit since I got it. So uh, obviously Ray Laconico knows how to set lock geometry properly and if that's done right, you shouldn't have any problems anyway, but um, I'm sure they're either carburizing or carburizing that lock face. I knew I had to mention that because you're going to have some of them keyboard warriors. Oh my God, I can't believe in this day and age there's no lock bar insert. Ooh, I'll never buy that knife. Well, that's fine. Don't buy it. Nobody's telling you you have to. I'm just, I'm just here to tell you, like I said, I have had this one for, I forgot how many years now, and I've opened and closed it a million times. Not a million, but I've opened and closed it a whole bunch. I've used it a good bit. I've tested it on the review of it. And that lockup has not changed, and there's no problems with the lockup. So, I guess uh, the ones that just don't understand, don't understand. That's fine. But I'm good with it because I know it's not a problem. And if it would be, this is made in the U.S. I can guarantee you I could DM Stanford Owen, and he would take care of it pronto. And that goes for anybody, not just me because I'm a reviewer. Now for some quick size comparisons, we have the Tactile Rockwall and we have the Chris Reeves Savenza 31 in Singo and it's a little bit shorter than both of these except it's just a little bit shorter than the Spyderco Para 3 and just a hair shorter than the Hogritter Mini RSK. Here it is next to Ontario Rat 1 and 2. And lastly, next to two of its brethren, we have the Monterey Bay Knives Mini Old Guard Warncliffe. That is just a little bit longer. And then we have the Monterey Bay Knives Slayback. That's a little bit shorter. Nitpicks complaints. I have, these are just kind of minor, depending on, you know, how you feel about them. But this is, for me, I think they're minor. First, I would have loved to see this a deep hollow grind, make it a lot slicier. Definitely would have liked to see this sharpening choil extended a little bit more, even though it looks like it's, it's coming out enough. It, it, I've already sharpened this once after the testing and it's barely, barely not widening up. The next sharpening is going to start widening up. I even kind of hit, you can see right here, okay, you can see where that plunge is starting to come out. I, I hit that with my stones. So I would have liked it extended, especially since the stop pin is right here. You just, if you extend it yourself, you're going to have to be very careful that you don't you know, you don't want to go where the stop pin is hitting because it could uh, mess it up in the closed position where it could come in contact with maybe your standoffs or something, or you could just send it back to them, depending on how much you use your knives or if that's a problem. If, if you care about that, if you don't care about it starting to smile back here, then you'll be fine. And lastly, I would have loved to see T8 hardware throughout. But other than that, I don't really care about no lock insert because they're doing, they're either carburizing or carburizing that lock face. And to me, that's A-OK. -okay. I don't really care. And other than that, I absolutely love the knife. You know, it, it's a premium knife, so it's a decision you have to make. Anything as I talked about were deal breakers for you, then, you know, pass on it. If this one's too small for you, they do have a longer version. I forgot what it's called coming. I think they're in the process of making those now so stay tuned for that not the longer not of this one i think it's a long i, I want to say it's the longer of this one of the sea otter I'm not sure about the river i'm sure that's coming down the road but i just love you know i love the fact that it's 100 percent usa made that actually you know means a lot and it's well made it's very smooth i love the overall aesthetics and I like both Ray Laconico and Sanford Owen, both of them super, super nice guys. Definitely won't be my last. I just picked up another Monterey Bay knife, the Monterey Bay Knives Rosie. I just got that one. I don't know if they're still available, but go check their site if you missed the last drop. And if you have any questions about the Sea Otter, feel free to ask me down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.